But was I right about this when I said you've been on the ER program for 11 years? Yes, sir. Ah, a tremendous run. Congratulations. Thank you very Good much. Good for you. And uh, you, you come to New York uh, for things like this, and it must be fun. Do you bring your family when you come to New York? I did. I brought my wife and my two-year-old son. Two-year-old son. And that, what is that like? Just crazy. Oh, to see this city through the eyes of a two-year-old, it's yeah. like fantasy land. Well, what kind there. of stuff do you do? Uh, well, we knocked off some of our Christmas shopping at the newly opened FAO Schwartz the other day mm -hmm. for about seven and a half hours. Seven and a half hours. Um, total sensory overload. My son, we, uh, we try to keep him away from as much commercial television as possible and all things materialistic. My son made a beeline for this $20,000 Ferrari. Uh, then partitioned off behind velvet ropes, <laughs> and he climbed inside, gave me the thumbs up, and said, Dad, I like this. Yeah. Now, you mentioned you try to keep them away from television, and uh, it's odd, ironic, if not odd, that, you know, you, you're a star on television, yeah. and you said all things materialistic. How on earth do you do that? It's quite a challenge. I mean, obviously, I would never let them watch my show. It's way too uh, intense for a two-year-old. But we also, you know, we want to keep all the Barneys and the JJ the Jet Planes and uh, all that stuff at bay as long as we possibly can. Right. It's inevitable it's going to soak in somehow sometimes see I, I think about this all the time because i too would just like to keep my son in a dark place downstairs <laughs> and <laughs> I mean, I guess, yeah. Yeah, no, but, but it, eventually you know they will have a peer group and you don't want him to be the, the weird kid who's who's never seen television they know the characters, though. I mean, he's never seen any of these shows. And you're walking through the store, and he says, Barney, Elmo, Big Bird, J.J., Thomas. He that's that's amazing, yeah. without having seen them regularly on TV. Well, so. I think it's from the books and from the toys, but yeah. uh, we're trying to keep the TV yeah. off. Uh, and uh, did you take him, like, to see uh, Santa or to the big tree or any of that we stuff? We did. We did the uh, Rockefeller Center tree lighting ceremony last night, which was uh, incredible for those of you that haven't been over to see the tree. Uh, last night was a huge spectacle. He was uh, thrilled. He actually got to meet Elmo, which I think brought the biggest smile to his face that I've seen thus far in his young life. <laughs> He's two-year-old, uh, is he? Yeah. And what was that like when they uh, introduced him? Uh, he gave Elmo a big hug, and he wished him a Merry Christmas, and he looked at me like, <sighs> you know, and then 20 cops go by on horseback, and Al Roker's standing there, and Jessica Simpson is singing, and, and he promptly got in the car and passed out, which is a defense mechanism that I've employed many times. Yeah. So it was just a like a whirlwind of stuff for the kids. It's incredible. It's a, yeah, sense does, does he have, have you been able to identify specific interests in him now? Does, do certain things really appeal to him? For some reason, for the last year, he's been absolutely train obsessed. Anything having to train. do with trains, yeah. yeah. Traino and Sano, a trainiac, loco for locomotives. We employ several <laughs> nicknames for the boy. Uh, we, there's a, actually a kitty train very close to our house that he rides at least three or four times a week. Mostly so he can hear this guy make the announcement at the beginning of the train ride. He takes his microphone and he says, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the Griffith Park steam train. For your own safety, keep your arms and legs inside the train at all times. And please stay in your seat until the train comes to a complete stop back at the station. <laughs> My son... <laughs> He's been there a couple of times, haven't I've been there a few times. <laughs> My son will repeat that everywhere he goes. He'll take... They'll take the drawstring from my sweatpants to go, Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the steam train. Safety, hand leg, back stitch, all aboard. <laughs> That's pretty good, though. That's very cute. Yeah. You might for some reason, we were on this movie, in the, the librarian was shot out in Mexico. Whenever you ask him where the train's going, for some reason, he always says Cuernavaca. <laughs> very, very advanced. Very advanced, yeah. yeah. Is it, this is, uh, what is his name? That's my son, Owen. Oh, there he is. That's, That's in it. Mexico, yeah. What a cutie. And uh, what kind of a kid were you? Do you see similarities now in your son? Uh, yeah, you know, a few, a few. Um, my wife likes to say that he looks like me when he's tired, stressed, or worried. Uh, <laughs> uh, I was a pretty shy kid, not, not much of an athlete. Uh, there was a pivotal turning point in my adolescence, my freshman year of high school. I was playing in a touch football game. And uh, this kid caught the ball and was running downfield. And I was running after him, and I accidentally tripped. And as I tripped, I grabbed his legs and tackled him. Tackled him in, in a touch football In a touch game. football game. And this guy got up and he goes, what are you doing? We can't tackle. It's touch football. <laughs> and then he said the greatest thing. He goes, don't mess with Wiley. He's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and this weird dynamic happened where whenever there was like an altercation, we go, oh, hey, hey, no, calm down, calm down. <laughs> And all it'd have to do is like a little, you know, uh, to 
cement my reputation, which I really didn't deserve. But that's, that's tremendous, though. What a great thing it that is. It's the greatest gift in the world. To be me. known as a crazy man and, and somebody not... Don't mess with this guy at all costs. Yeah. That's fabulous. Yeah. So that pretty much gave you a free ride throughout school. Free ride school. all through high school, yeah. Excellent. Good for you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be right back here with Noah Wiley, everybody. Nice call, Paul. Do you see... Um, I, I think I know the answer to this. Do you see your old buddies from the original group on the ER? Not as much as I'd like, but I do keep in touch. I spoke to Anthony Edwards, who lives here in the city, and I keep in touch with George quite a bit. And I understand George hurt his back recently. He was supposed to be on your show yeah. the other night. I was looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, he ruptured a disc, so I'm trying to get him on a basketball court as quickly as I possibly can. <laughs> while he's injured. While he's, while injured, he's, while yeah. he's recovering. Uh, and uh, you mentioned the movie uh, and, and you shot in Mexico. Yes. How, how long were you in Mexico? About five weeks. Uh, all over the country? or In the jungles, little jungles, just north of Veracruz, uh, Catamaco, Cuernavaca, <laughs> uh, and Mexico City. And what was that experience? It was tremendous fun for me. I, I can't overstate how much, how nice it was to go to work every day and not have to think about infectious disease and, and you know, human misery, but to do something very lighthearted that hopefully one day my son will look at and think of me as a hero. Well, good for you. you. And, and, and uh, on another... Uh, it seems to me that everybody I know who goes to Mexico gets sick. Did you get, did you get sick? Uh, I did not get sick. I, I got nauseous. Does that count? Yeah. Okay, I got nauseous. <laughs> it's really hard to consider yourself in the pink of health if you're nauseous. Well, on the sliding scale, and it was a sliding scale of, uh, <laughs> of ailments down there, I, I considered myself quite lucky. And, and it's, I understand it's some sort of a parasite in the water. Is that what yes, they say? Yes, and there was quite a lot of water work in this film. Yeah. We were, uh, I was told that it was completely safe, that Arnold Schwarzenegger, in fact, had swum in the same water. Well, there's your problem. Uh, that's, why that's why people are getting sick. Uh, when the producer gives you Cipro himself, <laughs> you know you're in trouble. <laughs> But, uh, again, now, but Mexicans aren't getting sick, are they? No, no. Well, I think that it's a, it's a question of acclimation, and I was down there long enough that I got used to yeah. both the food and the water. A, a beautiful countryside? Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I very much enjoyed myself. Uh, and explain the, uh, the, it's the library and the quest for the spear. Now, that, that seems incongruous somehow. It is. It, it speaks to the comic undertones, hopefully, mm -hmm. of the film. It's a fish-out-of-water story. I play a guy named Flynn Carson who spent his entire life in school. He has 22 master's degrees but never had a girlfriend, lives with his mother, never had a job. Uh, and he gets, a, he gets a job working at this secret library underneath the Metropolitan Public Library, which is where the Ark of the Covenant and Excalibur and the Golden Fleece and unicorns are kept, uh, which is the perfect job for him until an item is taken and he has to go on this adventure to reclaim it in the South American rainforest. Very good. And do we have a clip? I don't know. Do we have a clip? Do we have a clip? I can act one out for you. First time in 20 years we don't have a clip. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry, but it sounds very inviting, very appealing. Well, tune in and see. I, I, I wish we could see a little of it. It's the uh, Librarian Quest for the Spear. Premieres uh, Sunday night on TNT, so we'll look for it then. Uh, nice to see you again. Nice Congratulations you on Thank everything. You. Give my best to your son. I will indeed. Thank, Thank you so much. Noah Wiley, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back.